Hey, hey, Leo. Welcome to your weekly forecast for January 19th through the 24th. This is going to be for Leo Sun, Moon, and Rising. Uh, if you fall upon this video after the dates I just mentioned, don't you worry, my darlings. You were led to this video whenever you were ready for these messages or whenever they were meant for you. Uh, these are general readings, so not every single message is going to resonate. But if you were led here, rest assured there's something here for you. So we're going to go ahead and see what's going on for our darling leo sun moon and rising friends okay let's go ahead and get it kicked off here let's get it started off we're gonna start off with your first card and your first card my lovely leos is the king of swords okay so traditionally this can indicate a person people typically see the court card signs as people and so this could be an air sign person libra aquarius or gemini however <laughs> those of you that watch my readings you know i want to focus on you i want to focus on you and your energy so the way i read this is this is a part of yourself that's coming forward or a new skill or characteristic that you're strengthening and beginning to adapt okay and the beautiful thing about the king of swords is he is the master negotiator he's the master mediator here uh, the the king of swords is going to be someone who is going to be able to negotiate deals, find the win-win situation. If there's a problem or situation you've been struggling with or you feel that you've been at an impasse with someone, you're going to be able to approach the situation in which you're making them uh, an offer. You're like, here, here's the solution. Here's how you giving me what I want is also helping you. Here's what's in it for you right? So a lot of you are changing your approach. Instead of going in and demanding something, you're going in with like, you know, the spoonful of sugar with the medicine. Like, here's how it's good for you. Here's how you're going to be happy with the situation. The king of swords can also indicate the need to consult with an expert, okay? Uh, specifically, sometimes an attorney or a lawyer. So some of you might be preparing to move forward in a business situation, or maybe you're wanting to uh, go into a marriage or go into a divorce, and you might be consulting with lawyers, hey, how can I do this? I do feel there's like a protective energy here. So if you're going to a lawyer, I feel it's a way in which you're trying to protect your assets. You know, maybe some of you are going and trying to talk to a lawyer about intellectual property. How do I protect my ideas? How do I keep other people from taking my idea or invention or creation and trying to reproduce it? Right. Uh, how do I, you know, protect my business or my property um, if I want to get a divorce or if I'm going into this marriage? Like you might be looking into prenups or things like this. But the king of swords can sometimes be attorneys or lawyers as well. And so some of you might be consulting an expert in a field uh, that you're interested in going into or you might be uh, seeking legal advice as you're trying to get certain contracts or agreements in place as you're moving forward with your plans and your ideas another thing i'll say real quick and then we'll move on to the next card leo what, what i really like about the fact that the king of swords is showing up for you the king of swords is really good at communicating and 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 uh like discussing things with people without getting overly emotional and I, right as i'm saying this i'm hearing screaming like screaming matches so maybe some of you it's intense right now, intense times. A lot of people are stuck together, locked together in close, in close quarters and don't really have places to go. So maybe some of you have been having these massive blowouts. Like maybe tensions are really running high and you've been having those screaming matches with someone or with some people because our emotions get high, right? We get offended, we get hurt, we get insulted, we get frustrated. But the beautiful thing about the King of Swords is he can approach the situation without getting emotional. He can approach it with logic. And what do they say? Emotional, uh, an emotional argument is a failed argument. Because what happens? Gosh, Leo, why are you so emotional? Why are you so sensitive? Why do you have such a terrible temper? Why do you get hurt so easily? Right? And so now when you go into a situation and you're not being emotional and you're just stating the facts, you're just listing the facts at them very calmly, they don't know how to turn the tables on you. 
They don't know what to say. It's like, holy moly. Yeah, Leo's right. I did do that. I did say that. Oh man, I did, I, I did do that. So like how, like now, now, now they don't have any escape from the situation because you're calm. You're calm, you're speaking clearly, you're speaking logically. They can't dispute the facts and they can't use your emotions against you. People shouldn't be using our emotions against us anyway, right? But let's face it, it does happen. And so you guys are finding a way around that. You're just being very calm, very cool, very collected, and you're coming at them with facts that they cannot dispute. Your next card here, my darlings, Ooh, 10 of cups inner peace, happiness, right? So this approach maybe for some of you is salvaging a living arrangement, whether it's roommates, whether it's family, whether it's a marriage, you may be reconciling that, right? Or you might be able to find this new approach as working to bring peace within your living arrangement. I know traditionally people see 10 of cups and they automatically think marriage and babies and, 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 a, and a life. And some of you might be manifesting that. Maybe you're manifesting a marriage with a new person who doesn't use your emotions against you or whatever it might be. Okay, so, um, but those of you that watch my readings, you know, I like to look at the readings, the weekly uh, forecasts outside of love and romance. So if we're looking at 10 of cups outside of love and romance, because not everybody's looking to get married or be in a relationship, this is just basically inner peace. All areas of your life are satisfied. Okay, so this King of Swords lets us know that you're putting together your plan. You're forming your plan to get to your Ten of Cups, and it's going to be a solid plan. Okay, Ten of Cups is letting us know that every life of every aspect of your life is full and satisfied. Okay, um, I feel that some of you have a deep longing for children, a deep, deep longing for children. Uh, and you're finding, uh, and I, I mean this in terms of like, you know, being a parent, you're longing to be a parent. And so I feel some things are happening here where you're getting your plan in place where you're going to be able to make this happen. Okay. You're going to be able to make this happen in the not so distant future. Okay. So you may be manifesting uh, the parent of your child. You may be uh, putting things in place to like adopt, you know, uh, adopt a child. Uh, so I just feel like for whatever reason, there is a sense of children and family here for some of you. Um, and for other ones of you, this is just about fe feeling satisfied and full, like, like life is complete, right? You know, maybe some of you are like, I'm just happy living alone, or I'm just happy having friends who are like family who don't use my feelings against me. Some of you are like, I'm just happy me and my, my dog or me and my cat, right? But the abundance is here. Work is good, right? You're manifesting that financial stability, uh, the happy work, uh, home life balance, uh, that happy little balance. Your next card here, my darlings, ooh, is the Three of Wands. This also came up for Capricorn. So some of you could be dealing with a Capricorn, and I simply say this because it came up for them. If you have Capricorn placements, um, this could be like a double whammy for you or a confirmation for you because it's coming up twice uh, for those of you that have those placements. But the Three of Wands is about launching something or putting something out there, putting something out there to the universe. Uh, so like uh, some project you've been working on, you're finally launching it, something you've invented or created, you're unveiling it, you know, whether this be on social media, uh, some of you might be taking something to market, you might be pitching something to business owners or manufacturers, okay? Uh, but I feel this is something for yourself, something that like you created independently for those of you who are doing this. It doesn't feel like a collaboration to me. And that might be why some of you have gone to an attorney or to a lawyer, because maybe there's people that were around you when you were doing this stuff. And you're trying to make sure that once you pitch it and get it, get it sold, that these people can't come back and say, wait a minute, you owe me a cut. You owe me a share right? So that might be why some of you are going to a lawyer like, hey, what are my rights? Because these people were around, but they sure weren't helping me very much. They were busy, you know, drilling holes in the boat. And I don't want them to profit just because they knew me or they were around me 
when I was, you know, doing this stuff. So some of you might be going to the King of Swords for that reason, because you're about to launch something and you want to protect it. You want to keep it safe when the profit starts coming in. Another message here with the Three of Wands is basically um, it can be that we've seen something that we can't unsee. The Three of Wands is there's no going back right? You're putting something out there in the universe. There's no way to go but to continue moving forward. And typically, it's going to be beneficial. It's going to be profitable. In the terms of awakening, there's no going back. You've seen something and you can't unsee it, okay? So some of you are seeing through fallacies and some of you are being, you're beginning to see ways in which like you feel that you've been manipulated and the way that you see the world, you've been told how to see the world, right? I won't get too much into that, especially on this platform, but you know, you might be see you might be seeing ways in which um, you know, you've been told how you should act, how you should speak what you should think, what your religious ideology should be, what your political ideology should be. And you're breaking out of that, right? You're breaking out of that. You're breaking out of that. And uh, you're seeing through that illusion. Okay, and you're coming into the energy of moving forward, moving on with your life. Okay, I feel also in this, it's so interesting. I, I won't get too too much into it. But um, those of you that know me and watch my videos um, or know my work, I should say, you guys know that I had a really, really like strict religious upbringing. Like the Bible was drilled in my head since I was a kid. I learned to read from a children's Bible. So as I'm looking at this, this is making me have like kind of reminding me of Moses. Like in my children's Bible, when Moses would walk with his staff, and he was wandering through the wilderness and he was trying to like lead the Israelites through the wilderness. I feel as I'm looking at this, like this is you guys, you've wandered through the wilderness and now you can see the promised land. You can see it so clearly. It's right there, right there, right? And Moses sadly didn't get to go into the promised land because his pride got in the way right? He took credit or he tried to take credit for what God did because people were annoying him and irritating him. And he just kind of snapped and he was like, don't you know who I am? Don't you know the powers that I have? Like he just kind of snapped, right? So I feel there's a message here. You're very close to the promised land. You can see it. Don't let your pride, don't let the like people agitating you mess that up. Don't let them get in the way, right? Because this is yours for the taking. That's the feeling I'm seeing here with this Three of Wands. Your next card here, my darlings, is the Hanged Man. Don't let this discourage you. This is a very, very positive message. Also, I just got chills because this also came up for Capricorn. So a lot of you have some Capricorn placements here or you're dealing with a Capricorn, okay? Or the area of your life where your Capricorn placement is might be where you're having uh, this these massive changes in your life. But let's put Capricorn aside because that might not be for all of you. This is still your reading. There's still messages here for you. People don't like to see the hanged man. They get discouraged. They're like, oh man, nothing's gonna happen. I'm gonna be stuck. That's not what this card is about, okay? First and foremost, it's a major arcana card. When the major arcana cards come up, this is a designated little crossroads. This is a pre-planned pit stop in your life. We have a lot of wiggle room in life. We have a lot of free space in life that we can play and manifest and create, right? We get to create a lot of our reality. But there's just certain little pit stops, certain little points that are predestined for us because it goes into something, a new chapter that we're going into based on our life path, sometimes even life purpose, something that we came here to accomplish, that we came here to learn, break free from, succeed at. So anytime you see major arcana cards, that's what's going on. That's the energy that you're in. And it's not gonna last a day or two. This energy is gonna be around for a while. With the hanged man, how long it lasts is gonna be up to you. And we're gonna talk about this right now. What people don't understand about the hanged man is it's basically the universe is very kindly, very lovingly giving you a little bit of a timeout because you're about to receive special delivery. You're about to receive what you've been trying to manifest, 
right? It's about to come in. And your angels and guides are a little bit hesitant. They're like, ah, Leo, oh gosh, oh, we want to honor your free will. You've been asking for this, and so we're going to bring it to you. But we just really need to make super duper sure, you know, is this really what you want? Because we think, we think, or we actually, we know, we know that you're going to be happier with a different manifestation. We know you're going to be happy with something else. And the reason why this happens is sometimes we manifest on autopilot. Okay. So the best example that I can give you is like a kid and every year for Christmas, they put on their list, you know, I want a Lego set this year, right? Or I want an electric train every single year. And they don't get it. They don't get what they ask for. So it goes on the list next year. It goes on the list next year. And then automatically after a certain point like you're going after it, you think you want it but are you going to want that electric train are you going to want that lego set once you're in college or once you've you know you're, you're an adult and you're middle aged maybe maybe you might like it for nostalgia reasons but typically our taste changes we grow up right so there might be some things you've been putting out there mentally on autopilot right? And energy is going to come to you now that you're unblocked, things are flowing. And so now you're being told, hey, double check your order here. Another reason why this happens is we might not be seeing that there's a way for a better situation, a more satisfying situation. There might be something about the situation we haven't noticed or seen. So we can ask our angels and guides to help us. We can pray. We can ask God to open our eyes and help us to see about the situation, what we haven't noticed or what we haven't seen. Um, this can be true about business uh, situations or relationships. And sometimes we're trying to manifest something that's not going to bring us what we think it's going to bring us, right? And I always give the example of someone that didn't get a lot of respect growing up. You didn't get a lot of respect. Uh, people were very mean to you. So then you think, oh, well, you know what? One day when I'm famous, when I'm a big rock star, when I'm a big movie star, everybody's going to love me. People are going to love me. They're going to adore me. Um, I'm going to get all of the attention and praise and love and support that I deserve. And then what happens if that person manifests that? What do we see celebrities go through? Tabloids are writing all kinds of stuff about them, posting unflattering pictures of them, uh, you know, rumors about them. Uh, you know, people just kind of want to be clout chasers and be around them to get clout or to try to get money. And so we see a lot of celebrities have very difficult lives right? So some are good, some are great, but a lot of them have really challenging lives and they they end up in and out of rehab and they're unhappy and all these things are happening. So sometimes we're trying to manifest something because we think it's going to make us feel a certain kind of way. And spirit's like, eh, really though? Really? Like, uh, have you really thought about this? Like, is there some other way that maybe you can feel this way? Could you feel loved and supported and appreciated? by you know having supportive friends and high vibrational people around you and work that you really enjoy doing does it have to be being a rock star does it have to be being a, a movie star right and that's an example that i'm giving you so this is a good opportunity to kind of just double check what you're putting out there and what you've been asking for our next card here is the Hierophant, another major arcana card leo this is a big time for you a big time a big season of change positive change that you're coming into and again like i said crossroads decisions this is energy that's going to be around for a while the hierophant is about commitment okay commitment 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 and it's about structure order um tradition so some of you might be kind of returning to uh to some kind of structure or discipline this doesn't mean necessarily that you're going back to your childhood religion but you might be finding yourself kind of leaning towards more traditional kind of ways or more kind of like conservative values and again like i said i'm not saying you're going from you know extremes but you might be adapting certain things or bringing certain principles into your life uh, that you miss or that you enjoy. I just heard the word celibacy. Maybe some of you are, are planning or thinking of coming into a, a time where you're just kind of taking a break and you're holding out for the right person or right relationship. Um, and maybe some of you are just coming into a time where uh, you are figuring out what you believe in terms of spirituality. You're figuring out what your beliefs are. Either you're trying to figure out 
how much you believe from what was taught to you as a kid, or maybe as a kid you weren't exposed to any kind of religion. And so maybe you're trying to figure out what do I believe, right? What do I believe? Uh, this to me also feels like honor and commitment. And I feel like some of you are like uh, cleaning up your life and making it more kind of uh, PG-13 or PG, right? So some of you might be turning away from wilder times or wilder ways, and you're committing to what you want to achieve, what you want to succeed at. You know, maybe some of you are looking at your life and you're saying, you know what, I would have been a lot farther by now if I wasn't so busy partying. Or if I wasn't so busy, you know, chasing after trying to hook up with this one and that one. I'm not saying all of you did that. Don't get offended. Don't get offended now because that's not going to be for every single one of you. But understand and know whatever you did. If you were a super straight-laced person or if you were wild and you lived every day like it was your last and you just lived it up and you didn't care and you were very free and uninhibited, whatever it might have been, it was all a part of your journey. It all helped you to grow. It all helped you to be where you are now. Okay, it, it's it's not wasted time. It was something you were meant to experience as a part of your spiritual awakening. And now you're like realizing, okay, I got to commit to myself. I got to be loyal to myself and what I'm trying to create in my life. Right. And I'm getting serious about this. Right. I'm getting rid of the distractions. I'm getting rid of anyone or anything that's not aligned with my beliefs. That's not aligned with my goals. Right. So if you're going to be in my boat, you got to help me row. And if you're not going to help me row, you don't be in my boat. Right. Even if you're not drilling holes. Right. Even if you're not drilling holes, you got to help me with this or you don't have to be around. So I feel like you're being very selective about who you're letting into your life in terms of friends, in terms of associations, in terms of romantic partners. I feel there's like this kind of you're really, really being protective of that which you're working on and that which you worked for Leo. Again, you may want to check out your moon sign and rising sign videos. Some weeks that might resonate with you more than others. It might bring a little extra information that makes it a little bit more personal for you based on your planetary placements. I know a lot of you have been asking me about private readings. Yes, I'm doing private readings again. Uh, the link for that is in the description of the video, calendly.com slash amethyst angelite. And the podcast, you guys have been saying, amethyst, what's going on? Is that coming? Is that happening? You know, you went away for a while and you, uh, we thought you weren't going to use cards. You weren't going to do readings. Now you're back. You're doing readings. You're using cards. Like what in the world is going on? A lot of you have questions about the whole canned food thing. We're going to talk about it. Okay. So I finally have the domain set up. The domain for the podcast to set up and I'll be recording the first episode hopefully in the next couple of days but before next week's readings it will be up and I will have it listed in the community tab when the podcast is up I'll list the link in the community tab so keep an eye out there and then in the future as there's new episodes of the podcast I will link the description of that um, or, or the link, I'm sorry, the link to that in the description of the videos. And I'm going to be answering frequently asked questions. I'm going to be talking about my spiritual journey, what has helped me. Uh, I'm sure there'll be special guests here and there. We'll get it all figured out. But if there's any spiritual kind of questions you have, guys, feel free to leave them in the comment. I'm also going to have an email set up for the podcast where you can send emails specifically for here's what I would love to hear you talk about, right? So that'll be up soon as well. So keep an eye out for that. Thank you, Leo, for watching, liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. Bye, my darlings. Have a fabulous week.